Today we're going to talk about how to get rid of asthma symptoms. Okay, it's a very, very powerful and uh, exciting technique that you're going to learn if you have asthma. But it can also be good for people that are in stress, people that have hay fever, people who snore, people who have sleep apnea, and even people that cannot sleep. Now, this is based on this book right here called Close Your Mouth, developed by Professor Buteco. And it's called the Buteco Breathing Method. Extremely powerful if you have asthma. Now, before I get into it, I need to give you a little background on how this works, simply because it's very counterintuitive. So you have to kind of understand some basics. So if we take a healthy, normal person versus an asthmatic person, the average breaths per minute in a normal person is between like 10 and 12 breaths per minute. But an asthmatic is 15 to 20 breaths per minute. Okay, so they're breathing more frequently. Each breath of a normal person, as far as quantity of air, is about 500 milliliters. Okay, compare that to an asthmatic, it's 700 milliliters to one liter of air. And in a normal healthy person, the volume of air per minute is about five to six liters. Compared to an asthmatic, it's 10 to 15 liters of air. And that's the volume of air per minute. So you can see an asthmatic is consuming a lot more air than a normal healthy person. Now, here's the counterintuitive part. CO2, okay, is normally considered a waste gas, right? We breathe it out, we try to get rid of it. But CO2 is actually more important than oxygen, okay? Or shall I say, it's just as important. But if you have asthma, it's actually more important. Now, to understand why, you have to understand this, it's called the Bohr effect. The Bohr effect is an observation by, I think it was a Dr. Bohr, that the binding of oxygen in your blood, okay, in the hemoglobin, is dependent on CO2, carbon dioxide, okay? In other words, CO2 cannot stick to hemoglobin in your blood. It can't be carried, it can't go into the blood unless you have enough CO2. Now, that's a pretty interesting piece of data that I didn't know until recently. All right, so here's the next piece of the puzzle. Breathing a volume of air greater than normal does not increase the amount of oxygen in your blood. Now that's another counterintuitive piece of data. So when you're trying to breathe more than normal, you're not actually getting more air into the blood. And the blood is already saturated at a um, saturation rate of between 90 and 98 percent. So when you're trying to breathe in more air than normal, you are actually lowering the CO2. And remember, we talked about this, you lower CO2, and then the oxygen cannot bind in the blood. And this is why when people hyperventilate, okay, they actually pass out because they're getting less oxygen. Why? Because they're getting less CO2 to be able to bind the oxygen to the hemoglobin. So the more air, the less oxygen is delivered. All right, so you got that concept? Let it sink in. If it's not sinking in, watch this part again because it's going to be important for this next part. And one little side note, uh, when you breathe, roughly about 75% of the oxygen that's in the air that you breathe is exhaled when you're breathing. Let's go into the next part. All right, so the less CO2 you have, the more the airways are constricted. So if you're an asthmatic and you just can't get enough air, realize you don't have enough CO2. So CO2, the so-called waste gas, actually relaxes your smooth muscle, okay, in your lungs. It relaxes your lungs. It actually helps you breathe. So what is the real problem with asthma? Over-breathing, okay? What do you normally see in an asthmatic? They're usually trying to get more air, right? They're suffocating. They're constantly trying to get more air, and when they over-breathe, they lock up the oxygen ability to bind in the hemoglobin. So it makes it worse, okay? And this also would make sense too if you look at it from the viewpoint of stress. When you're stressed, you're trying to breathe more. You're trying to get more air, right? And where are you breathing from? Your lungs, your chest. You're breathing like this. 
And all that extra breathing is locking up and shutting down your oxygen. And you're using more of your sympathetic nervous system. It's called the flight or fight. You're not in a calm state. Now, this relates to a, a quick story. Um, a while ago, I went to lunch with a patient I had a long time ago. And uh, we were at lunch. We were talking. And all of a sudden, she was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Some food got stuck in her throat. And I'm like, okay, how do I do the Heimlich maneuver? So I had her get up and I started to do it and it didn't work. And everyone was sitting around. They weren't really helping. And they were just kind of just, they were kind of like, I was surprised that someone didn't call 911, but I started getting nervous because it wasn't working. So I saw her face turning red and she's like, what am I going to do? And luckily I came up with this idea. I said, okay, calm down. Just relax. I had her sit in a chair. I started to kind of massage her neck and just don't try to fight it. Just relax. And then bam, she started to breathe again. Okay. Why? Because when you're in flight or fight mode, when you're in stress mode, everything gets constricted. Okay. Including your lungs, including your throat. So if you're an asthmatic, you definitely want to relax. But the more over breathing you do, the less you're going to get oxygen into the blood, the more you're going to have things like sleep apnea, asthma, hay fever, and even nasal congestion. So this is the technique, okay? And it's really simple. Instead of breathing fast, you want to start slowing down your breath, okay? Instead of, you know, trying to sigh and uh, get more oxygen, okay, or gasp for air, you want to just start breathing in a very regular way and a very gentle way through your nose not your mouth, okay? And some people find it very helpful to just put some tape on their mouth when they go to sleep at night so they can start practicing breathing through their nose. So you really want to get to a state where your breathing is very silent. It's very soft, not so it's noticeable. So even if you're laying down trying to rest and you can hear yourself breathing, you don't want that. You want to breathe so it's completely quiet and very, very soft, very gentle, so the air that's coming through your nose is very, very light and it's coming out through the nose very, very light. You don't want to breathe with your upper chest. You want to focus on breathing through the stomach, okay? So you can pull your diaphragm down. The diaphragm is innervated by the vagus nerve, which is all parasympathetic nerve control. So the autonomic nervous system is both voluntary and involuntary. In other words, you can control your autonomic nervous system through this type of breathing. You can take yourself out of this sympathetic overdrive or flight or fight mode just by calming down your breath, focusing on the breath, coming through your sinuses very slowly and gently and coming back into your sinuses and no longer breathing through your chest, breathing through your stomach. Now, the first thing you want to do before you do anything is you want to measure how long you can hold your breath, okay, comfortably. So this is called the comfortable breath hold time, or CP, all right? Now, if you can only hold your breath 10 seconds or less, then you have a severe situation, okay? You have severe asthma. But if you can hold your breath between 11 and 20 seconds, uh, it's not as severe, but you're going to probably have many symptoms related to asthma. If you can hold your breath between 21 and 40 seconds, you're going to have less symptoms. And if you can hold your breath over 40 seconds without that strong urge, you're going to have absolutely no symptoms related to asthma. So the symptoms of asthma are directly related to your ability to hold your breath comfortably. So guess what? The goal is to get at this level right here and to be able to maintain that for at least six months to really make sure that your condition is in remission. Of course, we can never say cure, but we can say it's in remission. So the question is, is holding your breath the actual technique? No, it's just an indicator or a tool that you can use to figure out if you're progressing, okay, or not, right? This is the exercise right here. You're just actively slowing your breath down. You're breathing through your nose. You're breathing through your diaphragm. 
and you are, when you're resting at night, you're having the air go in very slowly through the sinuses and out through the nose. So as you monitor this CP or comfortable breath hold time, you're going to notice that you're going to be able to hold your breath longer and longer. And for every increase of five seconds, you're just going to feel better and better and better. So what is this technique doing? It's increasing the concentration of CO2 and something else. When you breathe very, very gently through your sinuses, you're also increasing another very therapeutic gas called nitric oxide, which relaxes the sinuses, okay? And you're going to find when you do this that your sinuses are going to start to open up. They're going to relax. You're going to breathe better through your sinuses. And when you check this breathing hold time where you're holding your breath, um, I recommend that you just plug your nose so that way it's easier to hold your breath. So very simply, start breathing through your nose. Make sure your breathing is very gentle and very calm. Never hear your breath when you're resting. Make it very, very silent. Slow your breath down as much as possible because you're going to allow the CO2 to help the oxygen bind with your hemoglobin. And use the diaphragm to help you breathe, not your chest. You can even put your hand on your chest and your stomach to practice that as well. Now, the other really cool thing about this is that you're going to find your stress level is going to dramatically decrease. Your ability to sleep is going to greatly improve. And everything connected with that is going to improve as well. So I'll put some more information about videos you could watch to get more data on this, as well as a link to the book. But if you haven't seen my acupressure technique on how to extract stress from your body, that would be the next step. Check it out right here.